Welcome to Creatively Using the Creative Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill and this week I wanted to, to take a look here at Adobe Flash Catalyst CS5. Now, Adobe Flash Catalyst is a brand new application. It's never been in the suite before, but it has been in public beta during the past couple of months. And during these months, you've been able to get a feel for what it can do. If you haven't heard about Flash Catalyst before, I can tell you that is a the application is really cool. Instead of you having to learn Flash or something similar to that, you can create some rich web interfaces using Flash Catalyst. So it isn't a replacement for Flash, but if you're just a designer and you don't like to code and you have no intention of learning ActionScript, then Flash Catalyst can definitely be something for you. So what I've done is I've created an interface inside of Photoshop CS5, and I'm going to show it to you here before we import it into Flash Catalyst. So this is how the interface looks, and it's just a something basic. So when you click one of these buttons here on the side, it's going to get go up here in the main frame here and display some information about that specific product. So I'm going to go over to Flash Catalyst here. And when you first launch it up, you have a couple of options here, one of which is import from a design file, either an Illustrator file or a Photoshop file or an FXG file. You can also create new Flash Catalyst projects from the ground up. But why not start with something you've designed in one of the other applications? So I'm going to go in and grab my application interface that I've got here, and I'm going to click Open. It's going to load into Flash Catalyst, and it's going to initialize the import library so it can import all of what's needed to be done. We get the import option once it's analyzed the file here, and this allows us to pick a couple of important uh, options here. First off, we can pick the width and height. Now, I know this image or this file is a 1024 by 768 file, which means I won't be changing these settings here. I do, however, want a color which is dark gray. So when we're not showing the application in the browser, it's going to show this color instead. So I think gray will do good. With the fidelity options, we select what to do with the layers. So I want to keep as much as I can editable, for example, image layers and text layers. And for shape layers, I'm going to leave it to crop. I also, very importantly, want to bring in non-visible layers. You can get some more advanced options if you click on the advanced box here. And it's going to bring up another dialog box here where you can select exactly which layers to import and which layers not to import. So I'm going to cancel out of that uh, dialog um, because I want to do it the simple way. It usually does it for me. So I'm going to click OK to import it in. And now Photoshop is going to analyze the file more deeply and bring in exactly the layers that you want and that you've selected here before. And once it's gone ahead and analyzed the file and brought in what it needs to do, we'll get the entire Photoshop file as a file in Flash Catalyst with all its layers and all its artwork in its full glory. So if I just give it a couple of seconds more, we shall have it import and we're ready to begin working with the interactivity bit here. So we see that it's now opening in Flash Catalyst, and what we have here is the main Flash Catalyst window. Over on the right, we see we have a toolbar, we've got a layers library, we've got some interactivity properties. Down below, we've got a timeline, we've got a main stage here, and we've got some pages or states up here. The first thing that I need to do is prepare one of these here to be a button. So I'm going to select the image here. I'm going to select the background shape as well as the text. And I'm from this little HUD menu that pops up, I'm going to select Choose Component. I'm going to select to convert this into a component, which is a button. This will allow me now to edit the button appearance. So I'm going to click here on Over. So when I click Over, so when I'm in the Over state, hovering over this button, I want to change the color of the text. So I'm going to select the text. I'm going to let it load up and recognize the text here. Seeing as I've got a few fonts installed on the system, um, it may be wise to just give it a couple of seconds to load up and sense what it is that's imported from Photoshop. When it's done that, you can select all the text. I'm going to make the color 
let's say when I hover over it, I want to make it a light blue tint instead. Something like this. And then I'm going to go over to the down state. So when I have it, when I'm clicking on it, and when I have the mouse down, I want to have a dark gray on this. All right, so I'm done with that. I'm going to click a little back arrow to go back to the interface here. And we can now see if we preview this by hitting Command Enter, it's going to bring it up in Safari, export the flash file. We should see that this now works as a button. But what we want to do now is add a brand new state here. So I'm going to duplicate this state. I'm going to select the first and hit duplicate state. This will create a page two. And on this page two, I want to enable the design premium content layer group here. And this is going to bring in my full layer group with the image above that I created before my title design premium CS5 and some dummy text that I imported. What I can now do is set transitions down here in the timeline. So I can select that this is supposed to go from page one to page two. If I click on this, I can select what it should do once it when you're transitioning from page one to page two. In this case, I want it to fade in and that's also the default transition, but I don't want it to happen instantly. I want it to take a little while. So I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna grab the handle and drag it out to one second. And from the page two to page one transition, I'm gonna do fade out of one second. If I now go back to page one and I click on my button, which I created before, I'm going to add an interaction to this. So an interaction you can add using the interactions panel over on the right hand side. And by adding this interaction, click the add interaction button. I can select to on click. I want to play the transition that we added to the state. And I'm going to select state page two. And I'm going to click. You can also say if you're in page two and you click this it, it, only if you're in page one or page two, I'm going to select it to be in any state. So it's not dependent on which state I am that this transition plays. I'm gonna click OK. Once I'm done with this, I'm basically basically have my application. So I'm gonna hit Command Enter on the Mac or Control Enter on the PC, and I'm gonna let it build my interface. So it's gonna compress and combine all the imagery and all the transitions. It's gonna build the necessary code and the Flash components in order to make this into the web interface. And once it's done exporting the, the interface, it's going to bring up Safari for me so that I can preview this and how it's going to look with the Flash player. So I see Safari launching here and in one moment it's loading up the main HTML that it created and it's also loading up the Flash files within. And if I give it just a moment more, we shall see what we have just created here. And here we see it opening up the final bit. It's getting the information. It's loading up. And in just a couple of seconds here, we shall see the interface here popping up. Now, because I did set the other time when I went over the import, I did set the white background. And that's why it's appearing with a white background here around the actual flash bit here. So you can see it is flash, it's using flash player 10 here. But if I hover over design premium now, you see it, we activate the hover effect. And if I click on it, we activate the click or down state effect. So if I do click on this as a button, it's gonna open up and play the transition and bring this in. Now, because we didn't create a back button, this only acts as an open button. So because I don't have a back button here, I cannot close this down. But it's easily added in from Flash Catalyst. Just do some text, convert it into a button as I showed you with this design premium one and add the interaction to go back to page one. So this is Flash Catalyst creating a Flash interface on the web really simply just using a Photoshop file to start from. And we get this created in just a couple of minutes.
Thank you for tuning into the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskild from Burnskild Media. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.